Hello, and welcome to Down the Scope. This is the first video in a series on the histology of the alimentary tract. I really should be starting with the teeth and oral cavity, but the stomach seemed more important. The stomach is the site of acid and mechanical digestion. The acid is required to provide optimal conditions for enzymes that break down proteins. The stomach can be divided into four anatomic regions, the cardia, the fundus, the body, and the pylorus. Histologically, the fundus and body are identical, while the cardia and pylorus are a little different. Basically, in the cardia and pylorus, there are no acid or enzyme secreting cells. It's all about producing mucus. This is to protect the adjacent esophagus and duodenum, which aren't adapted to an acidic environment. Meanwhile, the fundus and body are the business areas of the stomach. Plenty of acid and enzyme secretion is going on here. This is a section of stomach body from a sheep. At low magnification, we can appreciate the layers of the stomach. The basic layered structure is common to all sections of the gastrointestinal tract, so we'll cover it in detail here, but it will also be discussed in later videos. Starting at the lumen, the first layer is the mucosa. At higher magnification, we'll be able to see two sublayers, the epithelium and the lamina propria but it's difficult to discern the two at low power. You'll notice that the mucosa is formed of lots of folds. From the lumen, the tissue invaginates, forming a long gland that heads down into the mucosa before returning to the lumen. And so it continues up and down, up and down. This will be a bit clearer at higher magnification. Below the mucosa, there is a ring of smooth muscle. This is the muscularis mucosa, which forms an anatomic boundary between the mucosa and the submucosa. The submucosa is formed of connective tissue containing blood vessels, lymphatics, nerves, and ganglia. You might also find some lymphoid tissue in some sections. Heading further out, we hit some layers of smooth muscle. These are the muscularis externa. It also has two parts to it, but more on that later. The final layer is the serosa. This is formed of a small amount of connective tissue and the mesothelial lining. If we zoom in, we can get a more detailed look at individual gastric glands and the cells they contain. In theory, there are six different cell types in the stomach epithelium. This schematic shows the structure of gastric glands. At the lumen, there are surface mucus cells. They line the common exit of several gastric glands, a structure called the gastric pit or foveola. Where these gastric glands converge is called the isthmus. This is the first place you'll start to find parietal cells. These are large, deeply eosinophilic cells that secrete acid. After the isthmus, each gastric gland has a neck region. As well as parietal cells, there are neck mucus cells, which are very similar to the surface mucus cells, but in a different place. The third type of cell in this area are stem cells. In other parts of the gastrointestinal mucosa, stem cells are located at the base of the mucosa in crypts. In the gastric mucosa, the stem cells are located in the neck and can either migrate up or down the mucosa, depending on what cell type they differentiate into. Finally, there is the base of the gland. There are three cell types here. Alongside the parietal cells, there are chief cells and neuroendocrine cells. Now that you've seen the theory, let's see how many of these cell types we can actually identify on a standard H&E section and discuss their functions a little more. Here we have the lumen. Immediately adjacent to the lumen, there are some simple columnar epithelial cells. These are the surface mucus cells. Since they're the closest to the potent mixture of acid and enzymes, these are the cells with protective mechanisms. Their cytoplasm is packed full of mucigen granules which are released onto the cell surface, creating a mechanical and chemical barrier. Their apical surface, or the bit facing the lumen, also has microvilli to increase the surface area for secretion of bicarbonate ions, which can neutralize any acidic hydrogen ions that get too close. If we follow this layer of cells along, we'll reach a place where the mucosa begins to fold. This initial entrance is the gastric pit, or foveola. Exactly where the isthmus is will be difficult to determine and very dependent on the section. Just below the isthmus, each gland has a neck region which contains stem cells. In this section, you can clearly see mitotic figures in this region as the stem cells divide and produce new epithelial cells. 
As we move down into the mucosa, you'll notice the cell morphology begins to change. The easiest cell type to find are the parietal cells. These are sometimes called oxyntic cells. They are round, plump, and have very distinctive bright eosinophilic cytoplasm. These are the cells that secrete gastric acid. They also produce intrinsic factor, which is necessary for the absorption of vitamin B12 in the small intestine. The other obvious cell type are the chief cells, which are also called peptic or zymogenic cells. These cells are roughly pyramid shaped and have prominent granular cytoplasm, essentially the opposite of the parietal cells. You can see the granules really well in this section. Some of the cells have fewer granules, but really basophilic cytoplasm. This is because there's lots of nucleic acid in the cytoplasm in the form of RNA due to the large amount of protein synthesis which is occurring. Chief cells secrete pepsinogen, which is the inactive precursor of the proteolytic enzyme pepsin. The other cell types are extremely difficult to identify on standard stains. Enteroendocrine cells are present, but you won't be able to spot them. The enteroendocrine cells are responsible for secreting various hormones, including gastrin, which stimulates gastric acid secretion and promotes gastric motility. All these epithelial cells are supported by the connective tissue of the lamina propria. This component of the mucosa can get a bit lost in the stomach, but you'll be able to see the odd blood vessel and fraction of connective tissue. At the base of the mucosa, we can find the muscularis mucosa, that layer of smooth muscle that's the anatomic boundary between the mucosa and the submucosa. Any connective tissue underneath the muscularis mucosa is the submucosa. Here we can see blood vessels and collagenous tissue. In the stomach, there are also patches of adipose tissue. Next come the muscle layers or the muscularis externa. And at high power, you can really appreciate there are two different layers. One of them is formed of longitudinal fibers and the other of circular fibers. You can clearly see the different orientation of the smooth muscle cells with the longitudinal layer cells cut in a circular cross section, while the circular layer cells are cut lengthways. You'll also be able to spot nerves in the connective tissue between groups of muscle cells. The stomach has a very thick muscularis externa as the stomach wall needs to contract regularly and with force to mix food with acid and break down food mechanically. Finally, there's the serosa, which at higher magnification is this thin layer of connective tissue covered by flat squamous epithelial cells, which line the external surface of the organ. So there you have it. Those are the main histologic features of the stomach from inside to out. Remember the different layers where they start and stop, as well as the different cell types of the epithelium. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, why not ask them in the comments? Otherwise, there are lots of other videos on normal histology on the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.